Fully Cooly first aired on Toonami in 2003, which means at the time I was 13 years old. After watching it for the first time, I didn't really understand what the show was about, and at the time, I didn't really understand why I liked Fully Cooly. Like, if you sat me down and tried to get an answer out of me, I probably would have talked about the animation, and how funny it was, but I was clearly missing the bigger picture. Revisiting it as an adult is an incredibly eye-opening experience, and one that I'd urge those of you who haven't watched it in over a decade to go back and revisit. It's almost like a completely different show, and one that only makes sense, if any, after you've grown up and become an adult. But how does it do this so effectively, and why do so many people of my generation have such fond memories of it? Today we're going to find out why Fooly Cooly is so good. Fooly Cooly is a TV and manga series about a boy named Nauta living in a small, mundane Japanese town. Nauta is a sixth grader who has been negatively affected by his brothers leaving to play baseball in the United States. As a result, his girlfriend Mamimi has become attached to Nauta, even though he sort of sees her as a nuisance. One day after school, an alien girl named Haruko shows up and rams Nauta with her Vespa. After that, Nauta has robots coming out of his head and lots of weird stuff begins happening around the town. Before he knows it, Haruko is living with him in his house and government agents are knocking on his door. Over the course of the series, multiple robots come out of his head, and he's forced to deal with forces beyond his comprehension and power. On the surface, the show looks like it's a random assortment of crazy animations and jokes and plot points that don't appear to make a lot of sense, but ultimately that's the point. If anything, the theme of the show is confusion. Nauta has begun his journey to adulthood, being hit by the Vespa being a comical representation of the moment puberty strikes. The chaos of puberty isn't just presented through the chaos of the narrative, but through many of the things that happen to Nauta throughout the show. The bump that comes out of Nauta's head is reminiscent of a phallus. Many of the characters constantly ask him about it, make references to pimples, and ask if he's a pervert. Some girl in the other class had her super spicy curry bread stolen. Super spicy? And and when she stings, she leaves a demon's mark that shows you've been doing naughty things and it never goes away. What naughty things? Uh, well, like something really perverted. Yeah? Perverted? So, what's that mark? It's the mark of the demon! Really? Let me see. There's nothing to see. Cut it out. Did you see her now, Ta? Did she sting you? Pervert! He's a pervert! What are you talking about? Pervert! The ultimate theme of the show is the horror and confusion of puberty. Much like the phallus, we see this theme play out in a number of different scenes and symbols. Many of the robots and other oddities emerge from people's heads during moments of sexual arousal, Conti's gun comes out of his groin, and much of the dialogue suggests some pretty sexually explicit experiences. Hey! Ugh. What are you doing to me? Just hold still. Hey, I didn't know boys felt like this inside. What are you waiting for? Hurry up and pop it! If I rush, it won't pop! Go slow! The show also presents adulthood as something fundamentally extraordinary, while the town and childlike behavior is seen as ordinary. The town that Nauta and the rest of the characters live in is described as ordinary on a near constant basis, and everyone who lives in the town acts childish in some way. It's only the extraordinary people like Nauta's brother and Haruko who are able to transcend the barrier of smoke and see the outside world. The only other character to escape the town by the end of the show is Mamimi, who becomes a photographer after she graduates from high school. The adults who are left behind act in childish ways while only giving the outward appearance of adulthood. His grandpa and father are perverts and act out in crazy humorous ways. Nauta's teacher talks about how using chopsticks is a sign of adulthood, even though she herself cannot seem to grasp the concept. And Amaral wears his fake eyebrows in order to appear adult. Actually, let's take a look at Amaral for a minute. He's a very interesting case of how the show presents childish people masquerading as adults. He wears his fake eyebrows in order to seem like a grown-up, even though deep down he's a big baby with manhood issues. He has a fascination with spicy foods, even though he doesn't like them, and he's sexually aggressive towards his colleague, showing that he believes toxic masculinity means being an adult. 
I know the spicy foods thing may have not made a lot of sense, so let's back up for a second. In the show, spicy foods, specifically spicy curry, signify having an adult palate and mindset. Characters who can handle spicy food are able to pass off as adults more easily. Now to hate spicy food and comments on it in a few of the episodes, signifying to the audience that he's still a child. I hate spicy stuff. You're bad. You're just being a kid. It's an adult taste. Amarau comes to Nauta's family's bakery and buys spicy curry bread. When we see him later back at his base, he's constructed a sort of autopsy on it and then just decides to throw it away because he doesn't like spicy food. The autopsy is interesting because rather than eating it, he's playing with his food, something a child would do. In episode three, Nina Mori comes to stay at Nauta's house while her parents get divorced. She's able to eat the spicy curry no problem. Every time she takes a bite and responds to something a character asks her, she replies, I don't think it's any big deal. Then all the characters will usually follow up with something like, You're very mature. It's impressive. When I was your age, I didn't understand things like this. You're so mature for your age. Like Nauta, Nina Mori is also going through puberty, but has matured emotionally much faster than Nauta. Finally, let's talk about Haruko. Haruko is basically a personification of Nauta's puberty. She arrives unexpectedly and sets off a chain of events that lead to the robots and all that other confusing stuff. Haruko also manages to set off all of Nauta's sexual awakenings with her arrival. She also kills Nauta's childhood ego, or his brain, in order to create the robot portal. Writer Joseph Campbell once said that the path to becoming an adult requires the death of the childhood ego and the rebirth of the adult. All of these things combined with the weird medical mechanica space robot pirate stuff makes the show incredibly confusing, and that's part of the beauty of it. Fooly Cooly is one of those shows that not only ages well, but gets better as you age. Watching it as a teenager can be a fun experience, but it's hard to contextualize its many themes or really make sense of what it's actually trying to say. It wasn't until I became an adult and had already finished my journey to adulthood that I truly sort of understood what was really going on. It's a show that ages like a fine wine, but one that ages with you as you get older and not necessarily the passage of time. It's a reminder that our past is always there, and no matter how hard you try, you'll never smooth it out. You'll never totally forget the things that made you who you are. Because life is crazy, fun, chaotic, confusing, and painful. It's a show that reminds you that you never actually stopped growing up, you just kind of learned to live with the pain of it.